What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Rex Righteous, and I'm back with another Flashpoint. So on the latest news with uh, boxing, uh, if you check out Boxing Scene, there's an article on Mayweather Sr. talking about how he believes his son will fight again. And not just to come back and fight, he will break Rocky Marciano's 49-0 record. The big time legend. Um, Mayweather retired a year ago after dominating a former welterweight champion, Andre Berto, over 12 rounds at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. After a few months after that fight, he vacated the WBC slash WBA world, world titles at welterweight and junior middleweight. During several recent interviews, Mayweather made it clear that he was done with the sport and focusing his energy on signing talent to his promotional company. So in this interview, uh, I guess it was on the podcast of On the Ropes Boxing Radio, they asked Mayweather if, if they thought if he would be able to fight again, if his son would be able to fight again. Mayweather Seniors replies with, uh, well, you know, I'm here to tell you that I don't know. But me, myself, I do believe that he will come back and have one more fight. I mean, I'm not saying so much as just to fight. I'm not talking about breaking Rocky Marciano's record. I think he can do it. So, he's really uh, confident in his son. He also said that, of course, it's about picking the right fight. That would be something that me and him would have to do. We would have to check him out, the individual that we're looking for to fight. We'd have to put a check in on him. Now, that's how it ended. That's how the... um, the interview ended they asked him about Conor McGregor of course he mentioned what he thought about him and you know that is off the off the table now because uh, Floyd is not really interested anymore of course Conor McGregor is not interested in a flat fee he's trying to make hundreds of millions of dollars like Mayweather so uh, I think that this is somewhat authentic and Honestly, I've been seeing Floyd Mayweather Sr. in the media and having more interviews than his own son lately. Uh, seems like to me that Floyd Mayweather has been looking into talent. He's checked out the Olympics with um, Shakur Stevenson, um, the silver medalist for the United States of America um, in boxing. He's, he's been looking around, but at the same time staying low-key. He's mentioned some words on Triple G. He's not too much of a fan of his, I think. And he's uh, backing Canelo and his beliefs on how he should go along with his, uh, his career. Now, if you ask me, I believe that Floyd might come back and I'm not sure if it will be with Pacquiao or whoever there are a lot of people that are not too fond with the May Pack 2 coming about um it kind of puts a bad name on boxing um some people are ready for a change and some people are just waiting around because they don't really watch boxing so if Mayweather comes back they're waiting for him to dictate where boxing goes from whatever he has planned or whoever he's gonna fight but I do know that he has to put his name out there because guys like Triple G guys like Roman Gonzalez guys like Sergey Kovalev guys like Andre Ward guys like I would say yeah maybe Terrence Crawford even Jesse Vargas as well because those guys are in the hunt to change history, change course of where boxing is going now. So to make himself relevant, he has to do those things. His fighters are doing well. I have no ill will towards those guys. 
I like the TMT fighters. I think they're good people. I think that they carry themselves well. And they're good fighters. They're local fighters. Just like most local fighters, they're usually hard earners. Like people that um, are like nine to fivers, you know what I'm saying? Average Joe. You know, of course, they're boxers, so of course, they're going to be like an entertainer. But at the same time, they're athletes and they take it really serious. I just feel that Mayweather is different. He's a couple levels, you know, above those guys. And, you know, I see him throwing his hat or his name into, into, the, into the hat of boxing every few months just to keep himself relevant. And especially if uh, Sergey wins or if Triple G wins versus Canelo um, we can we can try to act like he won't want that spotlight but Mayweather's been used to the spotlight for a long time and he deserves it but at the same time um, you know with these guys coming up and, and Pacquiao on his way out because he could lose as well um, I could see him still fighting his way for the spotlight for his younger talented boxers that are in his roster to still get the recognition that he thinks that they deserve so that's my take on that what do you guys think do you think Mayweather's going to come back next year in 2017 and try to jack the May 5th the holiday that Mexican holiday month and fight again or is it just hoopla is it just you know smoke you know, smoke and mirrors is it the same old story because he hasn't fought in a year. It's been a while. So um, let me know what's your take. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next subject. So there was another dope article on boxing scene as well. Uh, it was uh, about Chocolatito. He says that he is not pleased with offer from Inui. Prefers Cuadras. So apparently... The monster and his promoter, which is uh, represented by Tech and Promotion, gave Roman a nice, uh, uh, not a nice. I'm sorry. They gave him a deal, and they didn't. They he believe Roman believes that they lowballed him. He didn't like it. He says that he's moving on. He feels HBO will not offer a lot of money to face Inui. A Japanese fighter who is unknown to the American audience on U.S. soil. Okay, so he he believes that it, it, it's not worth it. Uh, his quote was, "I do not care if Estrada asks me for a rematch. If he's not going to offer me good money, it won't happen. A rematch with Cuadras will be tremendous. There will be more money. I do not know if people from HBO are interested in a fight with Inui in the, in the United States." I've been offered a fight with Anui, but with a low purse, which does not suit me. The problem is the purse. It all depends on the people from HBO. So, with that being said, as you can see, uh, Chocolatito is out to get paid. Uh, I can't tell you the numbers. I'm sorry. I I don't I don't want to just sit here and say lies or whatever but Chocolatito is 46 and old man with 40, with uh, 38 KOs um, I don't think he's going anywhere he's not going to go to 122 I don't think he's going to go to 118 um, you know his best bet would be to fight Cuadras again in my opinion um When it comes to money, it just makes more sense. If you would have been in that arena that night, you would have seen why people would want a rematch. And people loved the fight. It was amazing. I don't know too much about Estrada. People say that that was one of his best fights before fighting uh, Cuadras. So why not just stay in the United States, make your money here, you know, do what you got to do, and then hype up the Inui fight because the Inui was there. He was there. He was there at the fight. So maybe if he takes a few more fights, 
hypes up his name and then they can make the fight because um obviously roman is the star obviously he's the the number one pound fighter right now and um he doesn't have to prove himself as much as Inouye and um that's just what it's gonna be until HBO makes a different case of it I know that um some things are working behind closed doors when it comes to HBO they might be getting more opportunities but at this moment it's all speculation because uh, Roman is not happy so I'm gonna move on to another subject which has to do with PBC you guys please like comment let me know what you guys think about Roman and last but not least I'm here to talk about the article that Dan Raphael wrote on ESPN on his uh, blog that he has it was dated for September 22nd uh, the title of the article was what ha- what has happened to premier boxing champion so before as we all know the PBC fights were always on all types of networks it was on uh, NBC CBS ESPN Spike, Bounce TV, Fox, FS1. Um, And personally, there was times that I could not find anything on Spike. It was either on Spike 2 or whatever. I had to, like, go crazy and look for it because I wanted to see some of these fights. But now, it seems like there's no fights being put together or being hyped. The last big fight that I remember was part of BBC. If I'm not mistaken, was Thurman versus Porter. I could be wrong. But the article was roughly about how Heyman has spent his investors' money. The number that was quoted was $500 million, um, Saying that... Here's a, here's a piece in, in the article. It says, I regularly examine purse payout sheets from the state commission and the PBC fighter purses have dropped substantially from where they were last year. The production costs have also been slashed, which is why huge stage and both blue and red fighter holding areas are gone. It costs a lot to truck them in around the country or other bells and whistles have also been eliminated to save money according to the people involved in producing PBC telecast so um, here are some of the likes of fighters that are not doing anything this includes Danny Jacobs Danny Garcia Keith Thurman Sean Porter Adana Stevenson Andre Berto Jamar Charlo Jamel Charlo, Julian Williams, Irislani Lara, Vanis Martrazian. Martrazian. Sorry if I'm if I didn't say that correctly. James DeGell, Badu Jack, Anthony Durrell. I think Badu Jack has a fight though coming up in October. But this is what he was saying. It's Badu Jack, Anthony Durrell, Andre Durrell, Austin Trout, Adrian Broner, Rancis Bartholomew. Gary Russell Jr., John Molina Jr., Dehan Salah Cannon, Jose Pardaja, Edner Cherry, and Lee Selby, and among others. Um, I follow Erislani Lara, I follow Porter, I follow Keith Thurman, I follow Danny Jacobs. I also follow Rancis Bartholomew and Badu Jack as well. Those guys are always training. I can say that for sure. They're always training. They're always promoting themselves. And they're always in the gym. Um, But uh, it is very true. I don't see them talking about future stuff. I see them actually getting interviewed about other fighters. I've seen Sean Porter get asked. Out of all those guys, Sean Porter is always interviewed and he's always talking about other fighters. 
the questions are never led up to when is he gonna fight or if he does say when is he gonna fight he says he doesn't know and it's funny and not to be hating or anything because i've actually almost met sean porter <laughs> i was very next to an interviewer shout out to hustle boss that was um interviewing him and he seemed like a very nice guy He's take any questions anything you have to ask and to be honest with you um it's not shocking you know he does have his own promotion you know and he he's starting to build it up on his own uh, a lot of these guys have their own promotions like um uh, sugar shane mosley i think even triple g has his own promotion um and it, it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy you know people have to go this route uh there it says on the article as well that um there's been some mix up with money and stuff like that you know a lot of fighters getting too much money uh people that haven't even fought this year like peter quillen devon alexander lamont pearson abner Mares that had a pretty explosive fight with uh leo santa cruz um i seen him training i'm not sure if he has a fight coming up but this was this was written on um on the 22nd and, and and honestly you know you guys let me know you know what, what um what's it gonna be like for for pbc in the winter time when everybody's gonna be watching basketball and the world series and football of course because that's the most popular sport so um let me know what's your take on pbc where it's at and what can they do to make it better because you know I'm not an Al Heyman hater, but at the same time, this guy can hustle his way into finding some more money, or if he has the money somewhere locked up in his closet, that he can start this over again. My thing is, I don't know how is he going to continue with these purses. I mean, you know, Adrian Broner's gotten a lot of money from all these guys that we mentioned. I would say Adrian Broner has gotten paid almost more money than all these dudes except for maybe Garcia I'm not sure but you know it's kind of, it makes you think you know is this the is this the right way to do business or is just this is this gonna be another way to bring in Showtime now and and switch it up with that because I've been seeing people talk about how Showtime is is getting better and there's more presentation there on that side too so i don't know uh comment below you already know super rick's righteous and i'm out